Before we get started, Arlo Stuff just got an extreme makeover Patreon edition. Okay, that joke is like 15 years old. <laughs> Sorry. Anyway, if you haven't noticed yet, my Patreon has been completely redone, and I've put almost everything at the $2 tier. That's right, now you can get access to Patreon-exclusive Arlo casts, where I talk about upcoming projects and opinions that won't fit into videos, access to the official Arlo Discord server, and even access to videos early whenever I can manage it. All oh, for just two little bucks a month. So if you really like my content and feel like supporting the channel, head on over to Patreon and start chatting it up with your fellow fans who have been scientifically proven to be the best fans in the world. Thanks for watching and have a great day! Make the Mario! Hello my absurdly clever friends, Arlo here, and today we're reviewing... Super Mario Maker 2, the inevitable sequel to the Wii U hit, has finally come to the Switch. So, the question we must ask ourselves is... The second part was gonna be, or is it just another brick block in the wall? But I couldn't come up with another Pink Floyd joke for the first part, so... I don't know. What's the point? Whoosh, I guess. My channel was still in its infancy when the first Super Mario Maker hit the Wii U in 2015, so I didn't end up covering it beyond a couple gameplay videos. Some Arlo trivia, I was actually gonna do a video on the fastest way to unlock all the parts, but I never got around to it. But I'm mentioning it here because my way really was the fastest, so give me some credit for something I didn't do. I'm awesome. Anyway, now that we can make and share Mario levels from the comfort of our Switches, I'm happy to finally cover one of these games, and even happier that it's such a stellar product. At the heart of Super Mario Maker 2 is, naturally, the Course Maker. The Wii U gamepad was the best tool for making courses, but the Switch isn't too far behind in terms of convenience. Handheld mode is definitely the way to go, and I do miss having the simultaneous display up on the TV, and a person is probably less likely to have a capacitive stylus with their Switch at all times, but using a finger in tandem with the Switch's buttons and sticks works perfectly well. Docked mode gives you that nice big image on the TV, though moving the cursor around with a control stick does slow things down considerably. Between these two schemes, there's plenty to work with, though I do have to wonder why Nintendo didn't include a gyro cursor option. I've seen this done in a number of Switch games, and it always works really well, and I have no doubt I would use it a lot if the option were there. Definitely hoping for it in an update or something. The controls work well enough, though I will say it took me a good while to get the hang of it all. The game offers a wealth of different features to mess with, and between all the switching and toggling and touching and buttoning and sticking, I had to work at it before I was creating courses smoothly. There are a few quality of life updates that I did notice immediately though, and they help speed things along in their own way. The selection wheel is very nice, especially when you're trying to edit in docked mode. Then a very big change is the ability to tap on an object and select different variations right there. In the first game, it was all about combining items together and shaking things to turn them into their alts, and while that was a lot more playful and Nintendo-y, this new way is loads more intuitive and convenient. It saves a lot of time. It's worth mentioning that the game features a comprehensive series of lessons for the completely uninitiated. If you're a younger player or you're simply new to this whole level creation idea and feeling overwhelmed by the aforementioned wealth of features, it's an awesome resource. It goes over the basics of building as well as the theory behind making a fun stage, and while I'm not quite patient enough to sit through it because it's pretty slow and filled with a lot of banter between its two characters, it's great to know that it's available. Speaking of them features though, all the new additions have increased the creation potential exponentially. If I'm honest, the fact that the Super Mario 3D World style is its own separate thing is a bit of a bummer, and it means that the overall feature pool hasn't been expanded quite as much as I thought it would be based on the trailers. However, I can absolutely see the benefit of having it separate, especially because of the potential for more stuff styles to be added in the future, and the features that have been added to the main styles are still extremely impactful. From what I've seen so far, I would say that the on-off switch has been the most important new item. It opens up such a wealth of opportunities in terms of both tricky platforming challenges and course manipulation. It allows for these complex series of events, and in my relatively short time with the game, I've already seen an absolute torrent of genius applications that I would have never thought of in a million years. Then when it comes to features, the big one for me is the addition of wind 
conditions. Seriously, I'm over the moon about this. You know me, I get a little bored when the goal is always just to run right and reach the flag. I just like some variety sprinkled in. But now you can tie any number of specific things to victory. You've got to collect a certain number of coins before you hit the flag, or beat a certain enemy, or a certain number of enemies, or never touch the ground, etc. This is another thing that drastically changes what a person can do with a level. Each kind of win condition will likely spawn endless levels that would have never been created otherwise. There are a ton of other great additions too, like auto scroll, rising water and lava, vertical sub areas, all the weird night themes that change how the game works. The first Mario Maker was fairly limited, not quite enough features for it to completely replace a traditional Nintendo developed Mario game, and yet people still used it to create some incredible stages. Now people have got even more tools to make authentic stages just like Nintendo does in its own games and they are creating pure magic. They're creating traditional stages, funny stages, ones that are essentially challenge levels from New Super Mario Bros. U, and even puzzles! like. Hardcore, what do I do, just puzzle it out stages. And it's such an interesting thing to bring to Mario. I'm telling you, magic. And if you don't believe me, all you gotta do is spend about four seconds in Course World and you will understand. The game wasn't out for a day before it was absolutely packed with amazing displays of creativity. If you're looking for the juicy stuff, you can scroll through the popular section. If you wanna check out some courses with potential, there's hot. If you're feeling dangerous, you've got an unlimited amount of new stages to sift through in pursuit of the next undiscovered gem and if you're looking for something specific, you can sort by tag or difficulty. There are so many different kinds of categories to explore, and it's all extremely addicting. Sometimes it's really hard to turn off the game or leave Course World because I want to be around in case there's some cool new thing to see. There's such a huge amount of creation potential, and people constantly come up with so many cool ideas that entering every level comes with a little rush of excitement. Sure, you may end up running through some amateur stage filled with nothing but stars and tons of bad guys, but you may end up riding on the giant giant sandbird from Super Mario Sunshine! Look at this thing! Each stage is like a little present. Is it an ugly sweater from Aunt Janine? Is it an Xbox from Grandpa Chuck? Who knows, but it's fun to find out. One very pleasant surprise this time around is the game's story mode. The first game had its own collection of built-in levels, but now the whole thing is wrapped up in a campaign where you run around a little map and talk to characters and take jobs so you can pay to rebuild Peach's castle. It's still essentially just a collection of built-in levels, but it brings such a huge amount of interactivity and charm to the experience. It's fun to choose which jobs you want to take first, and of course, it's always satisfying to earn and spend money on stuff, for me at least. Mario games are interesting because the characters don't always talk, but whenever they do, they go full on funny mode, and Super Mario Maker 2 is no exception. The Toads are always cracking jokes about unions and management, and all the jobs are sent to you by people with all these punny names. And of course, the levels themselves are just superb. Again, I really love variety, and here, rather than just a series of platforming challenges, you've got to work with all sorts of weird mechanics and meet all sorts of weird requirements. They're way more gimmicky than traditional Mario levels. Like, more than anything, they exist to teach you the different ways you can use the game's tools, and frankly, I wouldn't have it any other way. That's exactly why I find them so enjoyable. I don't know if it's total sacrilege to say this, but I probably enjoyed this silly little collection of levels more than I've enjoyed most actual 2D Mario games. It's just, it's just so much fun, and the whole story aspect is icing on the cake. Even if the next 2D Mario game features traditional levels, this shows me that more to do on the world map and characters and some sort of overarching goal that you work towards would go a long way. I mean, I could have told you that already. But here's a tangible example we can now point to. Moving on to the online multiplayer, it's awful! <laughs> it's really awful! Uh, I don't know if maybe you've had a different experience, or it's my connection or something, but for me, 90% of the time it lags and stutters so much that it's downright unplayable, and the other 10% it's just barely playable but still unpleasant enough that I don't want to. At the risk of derailing what is otherwise a glowing review, the performance is appalling, and I feel that giving us a mode in this state is not a good look for Nintendo. They're not usually one to give us features and modes that just plain don't work, and this is even more fuel for the ever-growing Switch Online is awful fire. I will say though that even if it did work well, I don't think I would enjoy it very much. The game pulls from levels that have the multiplayer tag, but too many people use the tag when it's just not appropriate. Half the time I'm stuck in a level that requires extra tricky platforming that's basically impossible with four players bumbling over each other, or stuff like rising lava so that you just spawn into the lava forever until you give up. 
I could see it getting a lot better when they patch in the ability to play with friends, but as it is now, it's not a mode that I am particularly interested in. Another annoyance, though admittedly a much slighter one, is comments. The ability to leave comments everywhere is good in theory, and it's trying to replicate that old Miiverse experience. But man, if you're playing a popular level, they just pop up all over the place, all the time, in and out sporadically based on your proximity to them, and most of them are these giant pictures. They literally obscure parts of the stage and make it significantly harder to navigate. I've tried to get used to the feature a handful of times, usually when I want to leave a comment of my own, but it's always ended in me shouting angrily at my TV and turning it off again after about eight seconds. Unless they take away the option to use those big huge pictures or make everything smaller or something, it is staying off. Final small problem before I get back to gushing. Scroll stop is a terrific new feature that is way more complicated than it needs to be. Instead of selecting it in the options, you've got to look up how it works and waste a bunch of blocks making walls in really specific locations and most of the time I can't even get it to work. The ability to prevent the camera from scrolling in certain directions is another very big addition to the game that makes courses feel that much more authentic, but they need to patch in a way to force it in the actual maker. The way it is now is just silly and unnecessary. Here's the thing about Super Mario Maker 2. I'm not that great at making courses. <laughs> maybe I'm not that smart. Maybe I just don't have the time I need to dig into the game and come up with some cool ideas. Maybe it's a combination of the two, but it doesn't really matter. It's amazing because it can appeal to players of any kind. If you've dreamed about making your own Mario game for decades, then you are going to have the time of your life. If you just love playing Mario and you don't mind a little inconsistent quality sometimes, here you've got what is essentially an endless supply of courses. Even if you're like me and you're not actually a big 2D Mario fan at all, but you love seeing Mario used in interesting new ways, you can enjoy the incredible creativity on display in the popular section, and the story mode alone offers a ton of value. Do you like Mario, but you wish the games were devilishly hard? Or maybe you have a toddler who wishes they were even easier than the easiest levels on the easiest games. You can look for levels by difficulty or make something that suits your needs yourself. If you're a total Mario purist and you want nothing but traditional, decently crafted levels like you see in a regular Mario game, you might not have a good time with Super Mario Maker 2. <laughs> you might be the one type of person that this does not appeal to. But if you've got any wiggle room at all on that front, this game is for you. Nintendo has celebrated Mario in a lot of different ways and capitalized on nostalgia more times than anyone can possibly count. But this is without a doubt the purest Mario celebration that ever has been. And while I'm sure there will be future Maker titles, I think the series itself is the purest celebration that ever will be. It blends all eras of Mario together in a very natural way, and it puts Mario's very essence itself in our hands and says, he's yours. Do with him what you will. And like I said before, the result is magic. Brilliant, silly, frantic, baffling, surreal, Nintendo-flavored magic. I give Super Mario Maker 2 an easy 7 out of 7. Before we go, I do actually have one level that I'd like to share. I don't have a ton of experience making levels, but I, I did do some studying and I've been planning this one out since the last game. I put a lot of thought into it over the years, and I just wanted to make one fantastic level, the best one I possibly could. I wanted it to really make you think, you know? Maybe something even Miyamoto would approve of. So here's the ID, play it, let me know what you think, if there are any tweaks I should make, I I'm open to criticism, I want to uh, develop this into the best level I can possibly create. Thank you, and have a good one.